brothers and sisters, welcome to another day, day nine. And today we're going to be meditating on John Paul II, St. John Paul II's life, uh, especially with the theme, Prayer After Communion. So brothers and sisters, keep inviting people onto this journey with us. It's an amazing journey. Don't forget to go to catholictt.org to find the one-stop shop for all that is happening upon this journey. And I would like to thank Trinity TV for making these videos and for all the hard work that they're doing to keep us all on the journey. And I'm sincerely grateful. And I know the Archdiocese is as well. Brothers and sisters, we have a lot to discuss today. Pope St. John Paul II, this man who was raised up from Poland by the Lord to become head of his church on earth, the Catholic Church, and he was magnetic, right? He captured so many people's hearts because he loved Jesus. When I was studying in Rome, brothers who had lived in the Rome in the time of the funeral of John Paul, they told me that every hotel was booked out. There were thousands of people camping in the parks of Rome, waiting for the funeral of Pope John Paul. What was the secret of this man's life? Well, let's hear it from his own words. And in today, Matthew Kelly, he spoke about it. He said, Pope St. John Paul II said, the Eucharist is the secret of my day. It gives strength and meaning to all my activities of service to the church and the whole world. Let Jesus and the Blessed Sacrament speak to your hearts. It is he who is the true answer of the life that you seek. He stays here with us. He is God with us. Seek Him without tiring. Welcome Him without reserve. Love Him without interruption. Today, tomorrow, forever. And Matthew says, well, what is the secret of your day? You know, brothers and sisters, you know, in my own life, after reverting and coming back to the faith, falling in love with Christ, in my own life, the Eucharist, is completely at the heart and center. I'd be lost without that presence because it's that presence of spending time with Jesus in the Eucharist that allows me to strengthen my sense of Jesus' presence throughout the day. And as we said yesterday with Mother Teresa of Calcutta, it's from her moments of adoring Jesus that she learned to form a habit to look beyond appearances to find Jesus, to look beyond the appearance of bread. We know our faith tells us this is not just bread after the holy consecration of the Mass. This is Jesus. And Mother Teresa saw Jesus in the Eucharist. And they, she saw Jesus in the poor. This was the secret of Pope John Paul too. But His Holiness, remember we also said that the saints, and this is the week where we're thinking about the saints in the Eucharist, they are so transformative of their, of their environments and of the world because of their love, their prayer life. Brothers and sisters, there is nothing hidden when we go to pray personally, whether you even go to pray with the presence of God in your home, you might light a candle, you have a little secret image, a statue, and that helps you recollect on God, to pray to God. What you do in that little space is not personal only. It ripples out to the whole world in the, in the spiritual realm, but also it, it just releases new life and vitality in you, and you are in the world, and you go out and you transform the world. So this movement of 33 days is about transforming the world, and we keep saying that. You know, Pope John Paul, he, the theme that we want to also dig in today was, is that prayer after communion. This is something very dear to my heart, because when I was a novice in Ireland, uh, beginning in the Dominican order, a nun came up to me and she said, Father Jesse, I don't find that you are spending enough time with Jesus after the Mass has ended. You seem to be quickly running off. And I was a little annoyed when she said this to me, I admit that. <laughs> but she said something very true. And I think that we need to recapture this. I'm not saying this is for everybody, because many people stay back after Mass and linger with the Lord, pray with the Lord to drink deeply from the sacrament they have received, and that they're still in the midst of being so united to Jesus. Remember the Holy Eucharist, when we receive the Eucharist, the fruit of the Eucharist is to unite us more to Jesus and to God in a very powerful way. And so these are the moments of profound grace for our life. This is where our prayer is so intense and so powerful in these moments of Holy Communion. So we should not waste these graces. 
Mass has ended. I put a challenge to you to stay back five minutes. It's not going to mess up the rest of the day. You know, whether we are in charge of ministries in the church, sometimes we could be quickly going to run around the church to do the jobs after Mass has ended. And then we create to an atmosphere sometimes of, 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 of fever. But let us all just linger a little bit after Mass and, and soak up the graces. And this is what Matthew Kelly said about John Paul. After he received Holy Communion and after he had celebrated his Mass, John Paul was often found lost in contemplation, lost in the heart of Jesus. We want to be lost in the heart of Jesus after we receive the Holy Eucharist. Brothers and sisters, I, I am praying sincerely that one of the fruits of this 33 day journey for our land is that we will become a model church to the whole Catholic Church of, of, of people who will linger after Mass still with Jesus, drinking deeply from His Eucharistic heart. God bless you.